Hello everyone, welcome to the second session of the Natural Language Engineering Workshop. If you're with me right now, I assume that you've already gone through the first session, which talked about um, setting up your NLP environment. I also assume that you've already gone through the exercises at the bottom of the first notebook. Remember, some videos have notebooks associated with them, at the bottom of which there are exercises for you to tackle. These exercises will prepare you for the next session, as well as the ultimate final project. So make sure you go through all of them, make sure you solve all of them. Without further ado, Let's get started on NLP Fundamentals. Let's go ahead and spin up our Colab Notebook. All right, so last session, you installed NLTK. Now let's go ahead and download um, a collection of books. All you need to do is to import NLTK and use the NLTK download method. Then, among the options provided, being download, list, update, config, help, or quit, you type D to download. Then, at the identifier box, type book to download the book collection. It will notify you when downloading is finished. Finally, at the downloader box, type Q and press enter to create the downloader. Now, you can import all the text that exists in the collection you just downloaded by typing from nltk.book, import everything. I'm only printing three samples. But when you do it, it shows you all the samples. There are nine text samples. To learn, the type of these text objects, you can use Python's uh, type primitive. And you can see it's an nltk.txt object. Now, if we define the context of a word to be the words occurring immediately before and after it, we can use the concordance method to retrieve the context associated with the word. Here, for example, you see all the context associated with the word sailor. A word context is a very powerful tool. It can help you uh, disambiguate a word's meaning. So you can see why uh, concordance as a method can be very handy, uh, especially if you want to figure out the sense of a word automatically in word sense disambiguation. The concordance-based word similarity method is one of many lexical similarity methods. So a very um, intuitive one you can actually extract words that share the same context with our target word. To do that, you need to use the uh, similar method uh, within the NLTK text object. You can see that man, whale, uh, ship, captain are all closely type to the word sailor. It basically returns um, the words that occur um, in the context of the word sailor. Now, uh, what if you have two words and you want to see um, what context they share? This is very important if you're trying to come up with patterns and templates to do quick filtering in text. To do that, um, you can use uh, the dot common context. Well, dot is just how the way you access the method, common context method within the text object. Basic lexical statistics uh, can come in really handy, um, particularly most of the algorithms, especially in the uh, statistical natural language uh, processing category, heavily rely on. Uh, frequency and counting and basic statistics. 
So if you want to count a uh, number of times a word has occurred in a text, you can use uh, the count method within the text object. And you can use the following method if you want to actually see um, what percentage of a document belongs to a certain word. Next, I'd like to talk about uh, the concept of lexical dispersion. It basically tracks how many times a word occurs um, in a corpus. You can see, for example, the word man is um, occurring in an abundant way throughout the corpus. It goes from the first word all the way um, to the end of the document. It's 250,000 words, well, more than that. And we're only looking at the dispersion for these words, uh, but you can see how different they are. You can see that the word man is far more uh, frequent than the word sailor. And you can see that the word man is also far more frequent than the word woman. It's interesting. Lexical dispersion plots are super important uh, for uh, chronologically analyzing uh, documents, especially formal documents, especially financial and legal documents. Uh, let me pause for a second and talk about how important simple methods are in industry. Right now we're at the era that there are um, a lot of complicated and complex methods um, that can be used to tackle uh, many natural language processing tasks. But before going ahead and use these models, we should always think, can I solve this problem the simplest way possible? Usually, simple ways are very robust. Also, you can always improve a simple method. This is part of the concept of agile development and agile NLP um, that I'll be talking about uh, throughout the course basically you'd like to always start with a simple method and reasonable method of course and only use uh, more sophisticated methods if uh, there is reasonable uh, suspicion that it will improve the performance of the uh, present method so my advice for you here is that do not underestimate the power of a mere frequency and a histogram, uh, a mere chronological analysis um, of a phenomenon in a text. Basically, if you have a very simple indicator that will predict accurately the phenomenon in a part of a document, it's best to use it. Now, let's take a few minutes and talk about the phenomenon under study here. Uh, which is natural language. Natural languages um, are comprised of various layers. In interacting with each other, these layers help us understand and generate natural language. If you take a bottom-up approach, uh, phonology is a layer that deals with our interpretation of the acoustic phenomenon out there. Basically, it's a mental sound system. Our mental representation of the acoustic phenomena out there in the real world. Morphology deals with how these sounds combine together and become words. At least the way we as humans interpret them. These sounds are called phonemes. And these words or subwords, um, depending on the specific case, are, are called morphemes. Syntax is a layer that governs the relationship between words and how they can uh, come together and build sentences. There are certain ways that as a speaker of a language you're allowed to make utterances and there are ways that are 
odd to make utterances. For example, the sentence, a cat jumped out of a window, is a perfectly natural sentence to make. But the utterance, cat, a, uh, out, jump, window, is not grammatical. Semantics is a layer that deals with the meaning associated with uh, words or sentences. Of course, we use all these layers to reason as humans. So our reasoning system has access to all the other layers. If you'd like to understand an utterance, you are bound to go through all these layers, form a meaning, reason as to what an ideal response is, and go all the way back from semantics to syntax forming sentences, all the way to the sound system of pronouncing the utterance that we have in mind. Make sure you find the notebooks um, related to the first and the second session in the corresponding directory available to you. Also make sure you solve the exercises of these two notebooks. As mentioned, exercises come at the bottom of the notebooks. Also feel free to use the code and play around with them. See you next time.